since you were an early investor in Spotify, you know, what do you make of this change in strategy? I don't, I don't think, really think it's a change in strategy. They've actually been telling investors for a while that it's an area of interest. I, I think it's driven by, you know, look, they, they want to control, they want to be in a position to, uh, you know, take advantage of any time uh, consumers are listening to things and podcasts are becoming listened to more and more. That's some like a consumer cultural perspective. I think there's a strong financial desire as well, though. Um, podcasting will, will have much higher gross margins uh, for Spotify due to that you don't have to pay the three big labels. And I think, that'll, I, think that's, I think there are some very financial reasons for doing these, to getting into podcasting as well. So, Mark, podcasting is still sort of a, a niche business, and Apple hasn't really paid much attention to it. What does this mean for Apple? You know, for Apple, you know, this might indicate that Apple Music, the core of the functionality, is not the only thing that they're up against in terms of competing with Spotify, who's obviously number one in the streaming category, and podcasting is there too. Over the past couple of years, they've really tried to position themselves as being at the top of the podcast market, which I believe they are. They renamed their podcasts app just to Apple Podcasts from iTunes Podcasts. They've been pushing it heavily on social media. They've been asking content creators to push it more heavily. So this could just give them another opportunity and another reason to continue to invest in the podcasting app. Mitchell, how big of an opportunity do you think this is for Spotify in particular? I mean, when you look at the economics of podcasting, yes, a lot of people are listening, but it's not a huge slice of the advertising market. I agree. Uh, it's still early. Um, although I do think it's, it's, it's still early, no, no question about it. Nobody has made a lot of money, uh, in the U.S. at least. In China, people have been way more successful uh, monetizing podcasts uh, across Alibaba and other platform and, and uh, Tencent and other platforms. But I, th I think it's a big opportunity for them. I, they've got the users. I'm sure they're going to start to push the podcast into people. It, I think this is all about gross margins. You know, the company, the stock was down a little bit today, uh, frankly, because they, they gave a little weaker gross margin guidance for a decline in gross margins uh, than people would have thought. Uh, it came back a bit in the end of the day. But I think this is a lot about how do you, how do you uh, get r less reliance on the three major labels? And all the negotiations are coming up this year as well. Mark, do you think that Spotify taking a big step into this market could lead Apple to make some moves as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that Apple Music has become increasingly important to them. Services have become increasingly important to them. It'll be interesting to see how Apple begins trying to monetize podcasting if they want to play that into their growing services segment. Maybe a subscription-related thing to podcasts. Maybe original content in the podcasting world that ties in between the podcast app and Apple Music. I think there's a lot of opportunity there for, for Apple in the podcasting space for sure. That said, Mitchell, Spotify shares uh, got punished today on concerns about revenue per user shrinking. What do you have to say about that? Um, I, look, I think the stock was down on gross margin guidance. I think most investor, most institutional investors care about gross margins here. And the long-term bet is, you know, management said they can have 35% gross margins. I think they had like um, like 25.7 this year, and now they're guiding to you know to you know 23, 24 uh, next year. I, I think it, they they say it's due to podcast investments. I think there's a lot of investors who believe that they will continue to get a better deal this time around with negotiations at the labels. Management came out today and, it, and said, "Look, that's not the case. We think it's going to be um, it's going to be a function. It's going to be pretty much the same deals." They also did note that part of the reason gross margins are declining, though, is um, they're entering new markets, and oftentimes you have like big upfront guarantees that have a negative gross margin. Like India is the big market they're going into, so that's some impact as well. Look, the stock ended was down like six or seven percent pre-market, and it ended down two percent. So there's clearly buyers in there buying the stock, taking advantage and of weakness. Mark, you know, give us an update on the the competition be between Spotify and Apple in music. I mean, Spotify is still in the lead when it comes to paid users, but Apple Music is number two. Yeah, Spotify is definitely in the lead, but Apple has had some very strong momentum with Apple Music lately. And the one thing that cannot be forgotten is this user base of iPhones. Apple said there's 900 million iPhones in use. They said this on their earnings call uh, at the end of January. 
And the thing about that is that Apple Music is built into all those devices if you're on some of the more recent software updates. Apple Music, I mean, it came out starting in iOS 8.4, which was, I believe, 2015. Um, and you know, there's some phones probably still running that operating system, but it's supported by probably a good chunk of those 900 million phones. So they have a very easy way, uh, you know, per se, to tap into those users, an advantage that a Spotify does not have because they're not a hardware maker like Apple is. But obviously Spotify's expertise, it's basically the only thing they do is this streaming music service. So they have a leg up from that department because they could be all in on it, whereas Apple Music is just one part of the bigger picture for Apple. Now, Mitchell, you're also an investor in Uber. Obviously, it, it appears like it's going to be a big year for tech IPOs, barring another government shutdown. <laughs> What's your outlook for 2019? As long as Trump doesn't shut the government down again. Uh, so if <laughs> Trump doesn't shut the government down, down in the SEC, uh, you know, doesn't shut down. Although we have heard, even if the government does shut down, the, uh, they are, supposedly the, the SEC is working on ways to continue to get filings. I, I think you're setting up for a strong, uh, strong IPO year. There are, you know, it's been rumored that, that you know there are a bunch of big software companies like uh, like a Zoom or like a um, Slack, uh, you know, or you know, internet companies like Lyft and uh, and Uber. You might see uh, Didi. Uh, there's a bunch of great companies out there, and there's clearly demand from institutional investors for growth. You can see it across software names uh, in the public markets. They trade at really high multiples. And again, a stock price is a function of supply demand. People want to own growth uh, in the market. And so I think you're going to see, I think it'll be a good year for IPOs. But I always do get worried. I always do get. Uber's still losing a lot of money. Do you think that will turn some investors off? I think when people spend, when the big institutional investors spend time with Dara, you know, who obviously came from Expedia, they will be pleasantly surprised at the unit economics for the business. Um, you know, they have a they have the business they have a business Uber Eats, you know, which is you know eight on an eight billion and, and Q3 was on an eight billion dollar plus run rate. Uh, growing like 150% a year. And so, you know, they're spending a lot of money on that, which I think investors will fully appreciate. Um, two, uh, you know, they're still spending a lot of money on autonomous, uh, a huge amount of money. I, I, don't, I don't really have an opinion if they're, they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. And look, there's also precedent for companies growing really fast. I mean, Netflix along the years has, has burned huge amounts of money building content. Uh, Tesla burns huge amounts of money. Um, Amazon, for many, many years, built huge amounts of money. I, I think there's going to be strong demand for Uber, just given the global, if you want to own a global internet company that could touch a billion plus users, like there aren't many of them in the world to, uh, that are growing you know, 30 plus percent a year. There aren't many to own. This is one of these assets.